Okay, so let's move on to the next question, um, which is basically, how do you manage a situation um, where you can uh, you know that you committed a wrongdoing? You know that you have committed something which is not right. The best that you can do is admit it. And the second is to ensure that ensure that you can you, you don't do the same mistake again. That is the only thing that is ethically morally right. If you try to hide your mistake, it can be a silly mistake, it can be a blunder, doesn't matter. Admitting that you have committed a mistake is the first step to become a better person. Of course, sometimes you have to face the punishment for that. If you fear the punishment, and if you start hiding the mistake that you have made, you are actually committing much more worse than worse uh, mistake than the original mistake itself. It actually makes you a person who is actually crooked, which which tells that you can fool people, which is not good. Why do you want to fool people? For what? For your mistake. Your mistake? I made a mistake. I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with it. If you feel genuinely I made a mistake. To say sorry, I made a mistake, I, I it's a blunder, I apologize, I will take anything that you give, I will try to do somehow, I will try to compensate or redo it. Nothing wrong in it. Of course, the other person may be, he can be very good or he can be very, very bad. If he is a very good person, he will say, okay, no problems, mistakes happen. And then he can go away. If he is a bad person, he will shout at you. He is only shouting at you because he is not mature enough to accept the, that mistakes can happen. Or maybe he is not in a position to accept, maybe he is answerable to somebody. Maybe he is waiting for some output from you which did not come the right way that expected, which he is supposed to give it to somebody. And he is not having the confidence to admit his mistake. I will tell you a real life example in my material life world. When I was working as a programmer, um, there are instances, there are several projects which were which worked on. I always have had the habit of telling the customer that if there is some going to be a delay, I will inform them up front. Pre pre prepare, make them prepared. In one place, I said to the customer that there is an issue in the software that we are developing. So we cannot ship you on the date that we promised you, it will be going, going to be another week's time. This is what the message that I want to pass the customer. But my management refused to accept this. My management told me to somehow hide that issue and then ship it so that they get the payment. I said I am not going to do. Because if I do this, there is going to be a serious repercussion on the usage. If that mistake kicks in, that is going to be a uh, irreversible issue. It's a medical software. I put my foot down and I said, no, I won't sell. Actually, the man we, I had a fight with my management and I said, I will talk to the customer. And I spoke to the customer, customer was unhappy, but he was so happy that I told him. More than the unhappy part, he realized that if I had delivered that one day with that, with that issue, he would have faced billion dollar lawsuits and he appreciated my honesty and he ensured that we will get more projects from that company. See, it is, I mean, it is your conviction that matters. Worst case, what would have happened? He would have fired me, right? But I would not have been cause for somebody's billion dollar lawsuit, right? He may not even understand. He may not even understand that I did the right thing for him. But I know in me that I have done the right thing for anybody, for him also, for my management also. What happens if he is sued? He will sue me in turn. My management was ready to take that risk. I said, which is not worth the risk. Because at the end of the day, since it is a medical software, 
the issue that is there on the software could lead to a coma for somebody which i cannot take in my life maybe you can i cannot i will not allow this software to go outside and i spoke to the customer and i got the time we fixed it and we sent it it's a matter of one more week of course everybody who was, was waiting for the release had to face the music for a week we all faced the music because we didn't deliver the end customer also had to face the music but we all escaped from a serious problem which none of us could have digested we should have carried to the to our grave as they say if somebody has gone to coma i don't i can't do it i can't even imagine me being responsible for that even remote i am not a doctor but that's a medical software that i'm doing that will be utilized by a doctor he will be making decisions based on my software's output and if he makes a wrong decision it could lead to coma for somebody which something that i don't i can understand that much i am giving an example that i faced so it is worst case i would have got fired my company would have got fired i would have got fired but nobody would have gone for coma right which is important that is the question that i ask and i i take it if we had but nothing wrong happen nothing will happen the world is not going to fall but you need to ensure that you tell it in the right way to the customer so that the customer also understands this is shit happens right it happens you can't stop it we are all human beings so we understand our limitations so it is important that you admit to you first and then try to figure out how do you come out of the hole you got yourself into a hole it is not because of somebody that you got into the hole you made a mistake everything it was in your control you still made a mistake because it is your inability or in your whatever reason uh, you made a mistake what is wrong in admitting it so admit your mistake first the moment you admit 50% of the problem is solved because you know what the prob- problem is you can solve it and people will also come forward to help you can i do this for you how can i sort it out you can do that for example i'm i'm not talking talking politics but i to give an example recently in chennai madras in india there was an air show done by the indian military 15 lakh people came five people died that was a huge mistake by the government of tamil nadu they didn't make proper arrangements to manage this 15 lakh people they didn't explain they didn't expect anything they they made mistake they made blunder up to blunder people got stuck hours together in sun and and hot sun and those who died mostly died because of dehydration 30 year old people also died it's not that old people died many people got injured and this has happened the government of tamil nadu instead of admitting their mistake and then saying that we have made a mistake we will make they should not have made, make a mistake in this case governments cannot make mistakes they should plan properly the least that they could have done is to say we admit that we made a mistake we are sorry we will ensure that we will get a better governance tomorrow if they have done that they would have gained the good will of the people rather they thought they will say they will try to manage the situation they say we gave so much as asked by the air force we gave so much of facilities yet we had so much then they have, they got left right and center from everybody it, that means you are actually building in negative feelings towards your government it will going to be def- reflect in the next election people not not going to forget this if you had at least accepted they would have forgiven you now they will ensure that you are not going to be elected next time this happens not only in tamil nadu it happens all over the world those people that is the that is why good governance is always important that is why sanatana dharma stories that we are talking about itihasas and puranas give you so much of stories which tells how governance must be done how a person should lead shri ramachandra murthy's life is a 
example for us to all to learn and then cultivate in ourselves. He lost Sita. Mistake made. Did he give up? He ensured that he will fight with monkey armies which had no weapons to retrieve Sita. Imagine yourself in that situation. Your wife is being kidnapped by somebody. What will you do? You will go to the police station. That's what you will do. But did Rama give up his responsibility? It may not be his mistake, but he admitted that it was a mistake. So he, it is his responsibility to correct that mistake. And he took his pleasure uh, to, to the pains to go through that path to retrieve Sita from the from where he she was kidnapped in, from Sri Lanka by killing Ravana. And he had no army because he was in the forest. He only used monkeys to kill Ravana and his army. That is the quality that we have to cultivate in us. That is how you should you should you should try to get inspiration from the Vidyasas and Puranas. That is why it is important to learn Vidyasas and Puranas. Instead of right, I mean nowadays people are trying to trying to find out whether Ramayana really happened, when it happened, what time it happened, Mahabharata really happened. Not why do you want to get into whether it has happened or not? Look at the story. What is the benefit that you're getting out of the story? Is it going to help you become a better person? It is going to help you manage the problem with problematic situation. It will, will it help you reduce your stress. Will it help you manage scope up with the situation? That is what you should learn rather than trying to find out when was Rama born. What is the point? Kids should know that from these books. Nobody cares whether Rama was born on 7,000 years or 70,000 years or 7 billion years ago. Nobody cares. That is not a value at all from Ramayana. But what is important in Ramayana is the various things that good things that has come out, like, like I said right now. Rama had to kill Vali to save Sugriva. Rama gave a, a promise to Sugriva that he will eliminate Vali. So he had to kill Vali. Vali had a boon that if he, anybody was fighting before him, with him, half of his strength will come to me. That was a boon that is has got. So if Rama goes in front of Vali, half of Rama's strength will go to Vali, right? If anybody else is there, if it is Sugriva, half of strength, Sugriva's strength goes to Vali means this guy is 1.5 times bigger than the other person, is only 0.5 times, he can delete, he can win. But Rama is infinite. An infinite person going in front of a finite person, what will happen? Half of infinite is what? Half of infinite is infinite, right? This is a finite body. An infinite energy comes into a finite energy, what will happen? Finite body, what will happen? You have this camera here. This is having a limited this. You put a brick on top of it, what will happen? It will, it will break. So Wali will die. If Rama goes before Wali to fight, Wali will die without fighting. Because he cannot manage the power of Rama. He is infinite. So Rama knew that he cannot go in front because it will be, he will be killed. And that will make sure that the boon that he received is actually not working properly. Rama took the blame on him. Everybody is blaming Rama to have hidden behind a tree and then shot Wali. But that is the only way by which he can kill Wali as well as ensure that the boon is also honored. So Rama took the blame, even today everybody is blaming Rama. Sri Ramachandra Murthy is being blamed for Wali's incident. He cares, he does not care. That is the quality that he built. So that is what you should, that is why Itihas and Puranas are important, scriptures are important. I think that's a great message. Um, uh, how it reminds me of uh, one of Lord Rama's qualities, which is uh, dharmagnya, mm -hmm. um, the power of the righteous path. And I think uh, this is um, this is something that's yes, yes. necessary. It, we it, all it, have it, to cultivate dharmagnya quality in us mm -hmm. to be on the dharma's path. Mm 